different organizations. So all that information we have put on that website. So it's a lot of links to a lot of different things. And so the talk is based a lot on the information we have put on the website. And I would encourage you later to go look at the website and that will help you to, you know, as you want to learn more and explore more. So the focus is on Bay Area and by Bay Area roughly the, the standard definition is there are nine counties around the Bay, that's what we call the Bay Area. But I'm also sometimes including like Santa Cruz, Monterey because they are close enough and on the marine life that area is very good for that. So that's kind of a rough idea of Bay Area. And by wildlife we mean, you know, different kinds of vertebrates and invertebrates. So vertebrates are the ones with the backbone, with the spine, and invertebrates are the ones without. And Bay Area has over 50 species of mammals, more than 400 species of birds, 35 species of reptiles, 19 amphibians, fish, lots of, I'm still learning about fish. It's, the information is a little bit harder to come mm -hmm. yeah. to find out how to identify them, what is found here. So, yeah. for the other information, I was able to get you know through reading and through browsing, but fish is still very difficult. And then lots of butterflies, insects, dragonflies, a lot of other things. So we'll talk about mammals first. This is one of the most interesting mammals in the Bay Area and they are found in many parts of the Bay Area. A lot of people don't know, this is usually called mountain lion but the sort of more correct name is the puma mm. because the same species is found all through North and South America and it's called puma everywhere. In um, USA they call it mountain lion because it looks a little bit like a lion but it's really not related to the lion, it's a different kind of wild cat. They are mostly in, in the sort of, you know, bigger wilderness areas, particularly in the Santa Cruz Mountains. But also in the East Bay, they are found in the, usually in the mountainous areas because that's where there is less uh, buildings and less people and all that. So There's actually a project going on from the UC Santa Cruz where they have been collaring the Pumas in the Santa Cruz Mountains and then studying their movements. And this has been going on for a while and one of the good things is because of that they found out that there's a big problem with Highway 17. Because the traffic on that is increasing, they're having a hard time crossing over. So the population is getting segmented. In fact, when they look at the data, they see this coming like that, come to the highway, come back. So they know that there was, or once in a while somebody gets killed. One of the animals gets killed on the highway, hit by a car as they try to cross. And this happens every two, three years, we hear about one more getting killed like that. So that's a big problem. So now, there's a couple of organizations that are working with Caltrans to put a tunnel under the highway. So they can, this and other wildlife can cross without getting hit by cars. And because they have all the coloring data, they know which is the most likely place that they want to cross. So recently, like about a year back, they purchased some land on both sides. And now they are working with Caltrans and in another couple of years I think they will have a tunnel to go under. So that's pretty, pretty exciting that that will happen. A few years back there was a very interesting incident where one of the Pumas came into Mountain View. Mm -hmm. Do you, you remember that? Yeah, yeah, I hear that. Yeah. So, and then because it was one of the collared cats, they could figure out what was going on. So when it was found, it was found in this very sort of very developed area outside an apartment complex in the middle of a lot of housing. And it turns out it had come in the previous night. Usually what happens is when they are traveling at night, they don't realize how much human activity is around because everything is quiet. So if there is a stream or something, they'll just follow that. And then in the morning they get up and realize they are in the middle of the city. <laughs> so this one came in like that, then he realized that, so he was hiding under a bush in front of an apartment complex. All day people were walking around, going up and down, nobody saw it. 
in the evening somehow it got discovered then it became like a big thing police and everybody was called in luckily they were able to call in the right people who came with a tranquilizer gun they darted it took it away and released it somewhere so they didn't have to kill it this is a very good story while it was happening it was on the radio i remember i was working in mountain view i was driving back and i was hearing the news and it was like you know probably half a mile from where i was it's pretty good how many mountain are here Yeah. They think about what was the number I read? Maybe three hundred or something, something around there. And of course, it depends how you, uh, because as you get to the East Bay, then it connects with other lands. So yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, and they have pretty big territories. The males have a very big territory, and then the females have slightly smaller ones. And the males' territory will overlap with multiple females. Mm-hmm. So the there is a as like I said, the people who are studying it, they have a. website and blog called santacruzpumas.com and there's a link on my website to that right so. where i i used to live uh, near uh, wana creek uh uh-huh. food hills of uh-huh. mount diablo and uh, one evening one uh, a month and my just passed by one block from my house wow there's yeah park- yeah that area there's a lot of them too yeah yeah Yeah, the East Bay is another big area, and same problem there with 580 and 680 traffic increasing. They're going to have a hard time, and there's no currently there is no good cross crossing point for them. Right. That's one of the general big problems we have in the Bay Area is the lack of wildlife corridors. So all the major, like 17 in the old days, there was no barrier, the traffic was not very high, so at night they could easily cross. But as the population increased and the traffic increased. everywhere now we are cutting off the crossing points for wildlife so they getting you know boxed into small small territories which is not good for genetic diversity and it's good that if they have these connections so now they are beginning to work on it unfortunately the later you work on it the more development has happened and it's harder to find the connection right You're talking about that i uh, recently i just began to appreciate alameda creek which runs from the hills <coughs> of this bay from Calaveras Reservoir yeah, all the, the way to Bay, Bay. correct and it serves as a corridor correct. correct and i saw deer all the time mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i never see a mountain lion sometimes i wonder if a mountain lion would follow because sure. once in a while they show up so yeah, yeah. It, it's a very nice where safe, alameda uh, creek joins the bay there is yeah. a park called coyote hills regional yes, park yes. so they have sighted once in that area oh, really? so they must yeah. have followed some corridor right, like that right. in right. usually that yeah. that area they are not found but around sunol there is lots of they they regularly they are seen in sunol area yeah i have not seen one either i'd love to see one day <laughs> so this is the other wild cat that's found in the bay area it's a bobcat hmm. this i see once in a while no. when you're hiking around you, you many of the parks have them so if you are out in the parks a lot there's a good chance one day you'll come across this one it's a lot smaller than the mountain lion of course So once, but I've never seen this. So the bot, uh, like bot cat is like a, just a wild cat, or so is like a di- uh, uh, like different kind of wild. Cat. It's a different species, so uh, it's not the same as a uh, regular cat. It's, it's bigger. It's bigger than your domestic cat, a little ah, bit bigger. Yeah, and it, the tail is very short. That's why it's called a bot. Ah, I saw a few times. I saw. Uh, yeah, if it's just yeah, I saw this one. Yeah, it's it's not as very big, but it's a little uh, bigger than a yeah, typical yeah, cat. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Uh, this is a coyote. Yeah, never seen that. <laughs> this also, if you hike around, you will. Uh, they are there in many of the area, and in fact, they are increasing a little bit actually. Uh, and no, maybe numbers, but also they are increasingly coming closer to uh, human habitation because, of course, humanity is proceeding more into their territory. So, hmm. but they are adaptable. So, in San Francisco city, in the city now, uh, they are seeing every once in a while. Uh, in Golden Gate Park, for example, and somebody's. dogs getting picked up and attacked and things like that so it's becoming a little bit of a problem what what do they eat <laughs> they eat all kinds of things they will eat squ- lot of time maybe squirrels okay. but birds also whatever they can catch okay and sometimes they will they can catch deer or small deer like oh. uh, particularly if they are in a group uh, so sometimes okay. they will get together in a group uh. so if they are in a group do they also can they can also 
attack human? There's almost no uh, <laughs> incidents of that happening so, so far. I have a close encounter once. I mean, I was not really uh, um, scared, but it kind of bothersome. Yeah. It's uh, uh, in East Bay near uh, Mount Diablo, uh -huh. foothills, sugar mm -hmm. loaf. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just like chasing me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, it's, uh, uh, it just keeps barking at the distance. Mm. And it follows me around. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've seen them a few times, but they've never been, you know, they just kind of look at you and whatever. Uh, and another time, I, uh, at Kelty Hills, uh, someone else, uh, I met someone else, he said he was scared of uh, Kelt. He said, you, you're big, strong, you know, <laughs> there's nothing. <laughs> yeah, you, I've not heard of them being yeah. a problem. Yeah. Very small compared to new. Yeah. And even uh, yeah. Puma, uh -huh. you know, they'll ne almost never, I mean, they pretty much never will go out of their way to attack a human unless there is some, it's defending a young and you happen to come upon it or something like that. Mm. Or once in a while there has been when it mistakes. Yeah. So there was like a famous incident in Southern California. Somebody was biking along. Mm. And, you know, just, so some animal coming through fast and Puma was waiting there to hunt. Maybe it made a mistake and just jumped and... <laughs> <laughs> and they do sometimes they can go after younger children so, so say that if you are in the wilderness keep the children with you don't yeah. let a very young yeah. child it go could on be a own. danger yeah. for uh, yeah. because that is small enough size for them to see yeah, oh maybe right. it's a yeah. prey yeah. but a human adult human being is not a prey for them mm. this is a gray fox uh. It's a very pretty animal. It's usually, it's very rarely you see it in the daytime like this. Usually the, you see them at night. Uh, if you're driving around, you might see I've them. I've seen night. once. Yeah. Uh, mm. The and, uh, interesting thing about this is that this is one of the only two members of the dog family that can climb trees. Mm. <laughs> uh, climb trees? Yes. <laughs> yeah, foxes, coyote, everything is in the dog family. Ah. Uh. day, it's called, right? And usually, dog, you know, dog family don't, don't climb trees. Cat family, they climb trees. But this is one of the exceptions. This is somebody's picture, but <laughs> this was in uh, the Presidio in San Francisco. Oh. They came across this fox, and I think what was happening is there was a coyote nearby, oh. and he wanted to escape him, so he climbed the tree. Oh. Is that the bird? Yeah, That's a, a bird. Yeah, it's a, a raven, I think. Yeah. So they, do they eat bird? It, it'll, but not that big a bird. <laughs> and, you know, in a tree it has no chance to oh, catch yeah. it. <laughs> but if, usually, more, more likely, it kill, if you find a nest, he will try to get the young uh, or the eggs or something like okay. that. Okay. Yeah. So last summer, we actually had gray foxes in my, our backyard. Uh, I live in Pleasanton. And uh, somehow, so there was somewhere in the neighborhood, there was a fox family that had given birth to young. And then they started showing up in some of the backyards. Mm -hmm. so it was fantastic to see it right in my own backyard. Mm -hmm. And this is of course raccoon, which probably more people see this. And they are very much uh, adjusted to uh, urban, you know, human areas. So they will be coming through people's backyards all the time. Once. One guy peeked in on the like the patio door in our family room. We're sitting at night and you know outside it was dark and suddenly you see this face killing. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like mask. Uh -huh. so these also in some places they're becoming a nuisance where you know very large numbers of them and they're beginning to attack like domestic dogs and cats uh, yeah, yeah. in some uh, areas. I hear that. Yeah, I saw a YouTube video. Right. Uh -huh. But for the most part in Bay Area, yeah, you know, I haven't heard of. Uh, <laughs> that's a striped skunk. So this one's famous for the smell, of course. Yeah. But again, they are not particularly dangerous. And usually, you know, yeah. if you don't bother them, yeah, yeah. and they give plenty of warning. Yeah. If you happen to come across one, it will first stamp its feet and put the tail up and try to tell you go away. Mm. If you don't, then maybe you get sprayed. Yeah. Dogs get into trouble every once in a while. Apparently, uh. dogs are not uh, able to understand the signals. Um. In fact, once in my backyard that happened, a friend of ours had brought their dog and we were all sitting outside talking. <laughs> and we have skunks in the neighborhood and once in a while someone will pass through. So we did, never saw the skunk but suddenly this dog runs into the bushes and he comes back all smelly. <laughs> <laughs> Four 
That's another animal that's found in many, uh, you know, within the city areas many times. It's an opossum, mostly at night again, so you don't see it that often. This is the only marsupial in America. Marsupials are normally found in Australia. They're the oh. ones that carry the young in the pouch. Oh. This is the only one that's found in America. Oh. So this guy also has a little pouch? Yes. Oh, okay. Correct. Oh. I caught uh, several of them when I was trying to trap the, uh, you know, feral cats. Uh-huh. And those, this little guy, this really, really tame. They're like not, uh, not aggressive. Yeah. Really yeah, they sometimes make a like a sound and they try to you know oh, okay. appear a little more fierce. But yeah, they're not particularly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I uh, on Facebook uh, a lot of friend post this uh, attack the chicken. Possible. It's possible. Possible. Yeah, they are kind of I think from like what I call omnivorous. So they will eat all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. They might eat fruits and vegetables, but they might eat whatever they can catch or. Find dead or whatever. Probably they say they eat the they clean up your backyard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they clean all kinds of things. Exactly. Uh -huh. And uh, the rotten uh, fruits. Little insects, yeah. anything like that, that uh -huh. they can find. Right. But it looks like a mouse. It looks a bit like yeah. a mouse, correct. Uh, it's it's a bigger than a bigger one. Uh, 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 so these are a couple of the squirrel species that are found in the Bay Area. Uh -huh. The left one is the fox squirrel. Uh -huh. So that one is not native to the Bay Area, mm -hmm. not native to California. It's coming from the East Coast, but they've uh -huh. been spreading everywhere. And they're very aggressive. They're very well adapted to humans. So you'll find them in all the parks and backyard and everything. Mm -hmm. There is another squirrel called the Western Gray Squirrel that used to be the native tree squirrel in this area. Mm -hmm. And that is now slowly being driven out by this one. So th that one now you might see, if you go into the mountains like Yosemite or something, you're more likely to see it. In the Bay Area, sometimes in the Santa Cruz Mountains, you still see them. That one's much more beautiful. It's got a much bigger, longer tail. Mm. And then this is the ground squirrel, the California ground squirrel. These are everywhere. <laughs> yeah. If you go hiking, you'll definitely see them. Um, I also saw like some black one. Is it different? So sometimes there will be a black oh, okay. uh, phase oh, of that one. Oh, okay. It's the it's a pigment difference. Mm -hmm. This is not a di different species. Oh, okay. So this is a brush rabbit. Oh, okay. So these are fairly common in many of our parks. Uh -huh. These you may see like evening or something like that, or even in the daytime if you are high, it's a little bit quiet on the trail, you can see them. Um, some months back I saw one here near Albi, so you know where the nature center is, mm -hmm. just outside there, it was, they were feeding. Mm -hmm. So they are, if you look for them, they are often. There is another rabbit uh, called a cotton tail, in particular this a desert cotton tail that's found in some parts of the Bay Area, mm -hmm. mostly in the East Bay. Oh, I see. And it's in, usually in a drier area. This one it will be in a little bit more. Uh, so, like along the coast and all that, this is the one you are more likely to see. Mm -hmm. the, I think this one was an Anon Avevo or Point Reyes, one of those places. Mm -hmm. And then there's a third rabbit called the Jack Rabbit. So, those are the three rabbit species found in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. That one has much longer ears and longer legs. So, this is a beaver. Ah. Which is kind of unusual, and for a long time, nobody had seen them in the Bay Area. And then maybe seven, eight years back, in Martinez, which is in the East Bay uh, of 680, where uh, and a beaver showed up there in the creek. And you know what beavers do? They build dams. Mm -hmm. So it started building a dam, and then it another one joined it, and it had a family. And for a few years, it was very famous, and it was very easy to see if you just walked up there. You park your car, you walk to the creek and you will see the beaver. <laughs> they are again uh, more active in the evening and night and then early morning. During the day they hide inside their walls. And then something happened, I think there was a lot of rain and some that dams got washed away and the beavers were gone. But recently I heard they are back again in Martinez. And then they have also found another uh, pair of beavers uh, on the uh, Coyote Creek I think where it goes through downtown, somewhere in the downtown area mm -hmm. of San Jose. And then there's more they are finding in the Los Gatos Creek and up near uh, Lexington Reservoir. Mm -hmm. 
It's also a rodent, by the way. It's uh, those big teeth in the fidget, you know, chews on the trees. Wow. <laughs> so that's a sea otter. Those, of course, you have to go to the coast to see Monterey and uh, Santa Cruz sometimes, but particularly Monterey or Big Sur, that area you see them very often, very easily. And it's a member of the weasel family. So actually, the skunk is also a member of the weasel family. Otters are also members of the weasel family. And one a very interesting thing about this one is that you see that uh, thing on its chest, yeah. so it keeps a stone there. Yeah. Then it takes, uh, if it catches a shellfish, it hits it on the stone to break it open. So it's using the stone as a tool. <laughs> so when I was like in high school and stuff, I remember that that time they were just beginning to discover that animals are using tools. Mm -hmm. They were very surprised scientists. Mm -hmm. And there were like two, three species, this was one of them that was famous for you know, using tools. Mm -hmm. And when it finds a good stone that it's like the right size and weight and all that, it will actually hold on to it when it dives, finds a new shell, comes back and again, you know. And you can see that if you go out uh, near Monterey sometimes, you can see them hitting the shell against the stone, breaking it open. These had gone down in uh, numbers quite a bit and now they are slowly recovering. Although very recently again they seem to be going down and scientists are trying to figure out what may be the problem. Earlier it was because of hunting. Because their fur is so good, it was very popular, they used to hunt them. Oh. Then the hunting stopped and the numbers were recovering and now there may have some pathogen, some kind of infection or something going on there. Yeah, a, lot, uh, a lot of red tide. In the yeah, that's also because that's some uh, marine organism, something that's causing a problem, right? Yeah, right, right, yeah. right, right. There's also a river otter found in the Bay Area. So this one is always only in the sea, but the river otter is in lakes and rivers, and and you may also see that sometimes. Then many places in the Bay Area. And if you go to the website, I have a complete list of all the mammals. <coughs> It's too much to cover in you know this uh, time. Of course, the sea lion is famous, and sometimes people call them seals, but, but seals are different from sea lions. Yeah. And sea lions have ears that are visible outside. Seals don't have outside visible ears. Mm -hmm. This this is the most common. This is the California sea lion, but there's a couple, another species called the stellar sea lion that sometimes you might see. But they usually don't come to the shore, but on some islands like in Farallon Islands and uh, some places like that. Mm. And the males are big, dark, and then the females are much smaller in size. Mm. And that's the harbor seal. So that's the most common seal you might see out in, uh, on our coast. Oh. Often you'll see them lying on the rocks or in the water, you'll just see the little bit of head poking out. And then, uh, I don't have a picture here, there's another seal called the elephant seal, oh. which is a speciality of the Bay Area particularly. One place they have found is Anonabebo. And then, last few years, there's another colony starting in Point Reyes now that's slowly growing. Otherwise, there's a much bigger colony also in the south near um, where Hearst Castle, that area, San Simeon, that area. But I don't know you can see them every year. They come out and then they give birth to young and the, it's, it's a really, but they have these guided walks. They, they are very popular, so they get booked very quickly, particularly the weekends. Mm -hmm. But it's really it's very, uh, if you're interested in nature and wildlife, it's a fantastic sight to see, to go out there. All right, you wanted to see about the, Marine life, right? So that's another speciality for the Bay Area. If you include the coast, is that you know we get to see whales, many species of whales. There is one season in the winter, so starting in like November, December, the gray whales they go south along the coast. They go to California, Baja California, and they give birth to young there. And then they come back usually January, February, March, something like that. So till March, sometimes till April, but usually till March, you can see them now coming back, going north. And uh, when they come back, often they have young ones with them. Mm -hmm. But there is also humpback whales, blue whales that are there, 
and these are found in summer so you can actually in winter you can see the gray whales in summer you can see the humpback whales or the blue whales so you can go on these whale watching trips from Monterey, from San Francisco, from the several places and it's fantastic you get to see these very close sometimes you see them jumping out of the water, bleaching, all kinds of stuff and while on those trips you can also see lots of there are different species of dolphins that are found so sometimes you'll see groups of hundreds of dolphins swimming all around the boat mm. it's very nice and the blue whale is the largest living creature oh. it's like they can go up to 100 feet long and you can see them right off you know within an hour's drive of the bay area so it's, it's pretty incredible they're there certain times of the year, typically starting late summer, but then each year is a little bit different sometimes. And if you go to the website for these whale watching trips, they tell you what's going on, what they're seeing. Did, did you take this picture? Or? No, though these are all somebody's picture. Okay, no, no. And this one's like, you know, taken okay, aerial, exactly. so very hard. Huh. Yeah, a lot of the, most of the other pictures are mine, but once in a while I've given the credit it's mm, from somebody nice. else. Okay, so we're going to move from mammals to birds now. <laughs> These are some of the common birds, particularly around water. Mm. Canada geese, of course, are very common, very well known. Mallard, and there's a lot of other kinds of ducks. So there's like another 10 species at least of ducks that you could see. Mm. Again, more in winter when all the migrants come. So that was a good time. Anywhere along the bay, you'll see lots of different species of ducks. And there's also different kinds of geese. One of the most beautiful is the snow geese, white with black wingtips. Those, they rarely come into the Bay Area as such, but if you drive a little bit into the Central Valley, you can see, and it's beautiful. You can see like a flock of, you know, 500 of them and all flying, all white, it's mm. beautiful. And you can also see swans in the Central Valley. Uh. So it's, about an hour's drive, there's a few places off Highway 5 where you can see swans, geese. There are like three different kinds of geese. Then there's also the cranes, the sandhill cranes that you can see there. So, but they rarely come. It's very, very rare that they come into the Bay Area as such. And then great blue heron, that's very common. People see that all the time. It's a pretty big bird and he'll be hunting for often. So, it, you know, typically herons and egrets are water birds, but the gray the uh, blue heron will be like hunting outside uh, on a lawn somewhere in the playgrounds because he's looking for gophers. And even the great egrets I've seen often on the side of the freeway, they have learned to hunt in that area. But they're more, more commonly found in water. And there's again other species of herons and egrets also. The heron is protected species. Oh, great blue heron? Yes, I think so, yes. Yeah, because there are people that have fish pond and the, the fish, the koi fish got eaten. Oh, I see. So they, they, they want to kill it and they can't. Yeah, they can't because it's perfect. Uh -huh. <laughs> and these are all what we call birds of prey. Birds that, you know, feed on other creatures. Except the turkey vulture, of course, that only eats dead things. So that's the common one you'll see that flying anywhere in the Bay Area. That's uh, actually interesting. I was uh, uh, talking to some. There are lots of uh, turkey vulture uh, in uh, uh, at Quarry, Quarry Lake area, mm -hmm. like <coughs> 20, 30 of them. I've seen many times the catch fish, live fish. Uh, it's not, are you sure turkey vultures? Twice, yeah. Because I can see them very close. Uh -huh. uh, uh, there's, there's no, it's, it's probably turkey vulture because there's no other birds that big. Yeah. No, I yeah. mean there are other birds. Osprey, uh, for example, is a bird of prey that does catch fish. Osprey? Yeah. So you have to look at the whole coloration and everything and be sure. Yeah, that's it's what people vulture. say. I mean, uh, why because it sounds very unusual. I don't think I've ever read about that happening. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, I have seen twice. I, I, but of course, I, I don't know the difference. What species, right? It's an right. osprey or right. a turkey vulture. Right. Ospreys will catch fish from the water. Oh. I see. Yes. Uh, so maybe it's osprey. Yeah. Mm. 
and then uh, kestrel is a falcon it's a, so within birds of prey there are different groups and the falcons kestrel is again very common you'll see it in many many places often they are hovering sort of in one spot you'll see them as a slowly trying to find a mouse or something in the grass and then when it finds it it'll jump and catch it yep relatively small uh, falcons there's a peregrine falcon which is much bigger much more powerful that's also found in the bay area in fact they have been nesting in all the three big cities on big buildings in san francisco in oakland and in san jose in the san jose one they put a camera on it and you can see the pictures <laughs> of the young and uh, all the nesting going on mm -hmm. and this is another one that hovers you'll see that in many times often by the side of the freeway or in some of these parks it's the white tailed kite a very very pretty bird and it will like hover steadily in one place trying to you know get a good look for the prey and then it will dive and catch it. And the red tailed hawk is the most common big hawk that you see. Some people call it eagle but it's a hawk. There are two kinds of eagles that are found here, the bald eagle and the golden eagle. But those are not as common. The golden eagle you will find in a more remote area. So in the East Bay, you know, in Mount Diablo or Sunol is a very good place to see golden eagles. And in the south, in the Coyote Valley area, you can see golden eagles. And bald eagles are slowly increasing in the Bay Area. They used to very rarely be seen in the Bay Area. But uh, last few years now, they've started, like two or three places, they're actually nesting. There's one famous nest that was there last year, and I think they said it came back this year in Milpitas, next to the school. It's right on the, you know, outside the yeah, uh, elementary yeah. school, there's a big tree and yeah, the eagle has been nesting on it. people share the Facebook. Correct. It became very famous last year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's one uh, at the uh, Curl Lakes. Mm -hmm. I've seen. Yeah, so they're that. slowly, uh, yeah. Quarry Lake, Delwell, Lake Delwell, Lake Chabot, they're slowly yeah. beginning. And some of those places, they're beginning to stay full year and then start nesting. Yeah, I had a picture oh, of, nice. uh, of eagle. Um, awesome. Yeah. And that's of course our national bird. <laughs> so this is the wild turkey. These are becoming extremely common. In fact, they're becoming a nuisance now. So this is not native to California. It was introduced from the East Coast. And they have really spread out all over California. They're becoming more and more common every day. The male is very beautiful, particularly in when it's displaying. Yeah, a little bit of people, remind people of a peacock. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's allowed to hunt. Actually, uh, yes, this you can hunt. Actually, in Spanish, the peacock is called uh, royal, uh, royal turkey. <laughs> oh, I see. I see. Funny. And I think the scientific name for the turkey has uh, pavo something in it, and, and that's yeah, the reference yeah. to the peacock. Yeah, mm. the, the Spanish uh, is pavo real for the peacock, mm -hmm. and uh, turkey is pavo. So, real is royal, right? So royal, ah, royal, royal turkey. <laughs> So this is the California quail again, fairly common, you'll see them if you're out hiking, usually in large groups, big family groups, that's the male, this is the female, and you can hear the calls often, and this is the state bird for California. Oh. The male is really pretty. Uh, first one, male, oh, okay. Oh, I see. Sometimes you'll see them with their young also, so little ones <laughs> running around Working behind. Really yeah. fast, right? <laughs> <laughs> so on the left is the acorn woodpecker. That's one of the most common woodpeckers you'll see. There are many kinds of woodpeckers found in the Bay Area, but this one you see often, they're very loud and vocal. So they're like flying around. The sound is a little bit, reminds you of a crow, very harsh kind of call. And they typically are in family groups. So they will, like a whole group of them are living together. And one of the peculiarities is you see the holes in the trunk behind. They will take acorns and put it into the trunk of the tree. They'll store it for later. So when there are more available, they gather all the acorns and this is how they store them. So you will find those, if you are hiking sometimes, you will find a tree with all these acorns stuck in it, all the holes. <laughs> then that's the acorn woodpecker. Did the, the, this the destroy the tree? No, no. And often it might be like a dying tree or a dead tree, but uh, it doesn't destroy the tree ever, ah. from best we know. That's a mockingbird which is very common mm. in backyards everywhere. It's a very, very uh, nice singer and it can also, it's a very good mimic. It can copy other sounds very ah. well. <laughs> wow. 
in fact there have been cases where it it can make sounds of like uh, i think it was making the sound of a dog to harass a cat and the cat was getting you know thinking each time there's a dog and running away you know, <laughs> walking bird or something <laughs> And then recently I saw a posting, somebody said that they were hearing this particular music from some like Mozart or Beethoven or something and they were like wondering what's going on. Finally they found it as a mockingbird. It had heard it somewhere and was copying the... <laughs> and morning doves there again, fairly common but very pretty if you see them in good light, you see a lot of subtle coloration. There's other kinds of doves also found in the Bay Area. They are not, the, the, the nests they build are not very good. No, it's amazing, I, you know, given how stupidly they build their nests, mm -hmm. it's surprising that they are so common and so <laughs> successful. <laughs> yeah, sometimes they just occupy the robin's nest, and sometimes they build their own, and it's like, Really fragile really, and correct. egg drop. Yeah, this is, <laughs> but this is, they're still managing to survive well. There's another kind of dove called a European collared dove that's introduced, but that's spreading all over America and now in, in California it's slowly. It came from the south and it's spreading north. And we are seeing it more and more when we go out. And this is of course the robin, which is a fairly common backyard bird. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, a male particularly in full, like in summer or something, very nice coloration and all that you see. And so they are also, in winter you, s you see less of them in summer, so there's a big migration going on. Although some of them are here all year, but there's a much bigger number that shows up in summer. Mm. So some of the feather are really like Reddish. colorful, yeah. some are not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, there is variation, so within each species sometimes there is a variation in colors. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes there's variation by the time of year, sometimes there's variation between male and female, so there's a lot of subtle stuff that you have to learn. So these are the two kinds of jays that are fairly common. The term blue jay is actually wrong. There's a species called blue jay which is found on the east coast. The jays we have here are the uh, scrub jay and the stellar jay. Scrub jay is the one that's much more common in the backyards in mm -hmm. sort of our area. The stellar jay typically is a little bit more in the hills with uh, more forested areas. They are, are they territorial? Yeah. Because I, I, I have a cherry tree and they guard the cherry tree. Yeah, and they will they harass all the other birds in the yeah, yeah. garden. Yes. So it, you, I used to have a lot of birds then when the blue jay came. No, no bird around the, the cherry tree. <laughs> <laughs> then even the, the, the squirrel got attacked by the squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> because it was uh, jumping on the fence, going to the cherry tree. Yeah. Then he just fly and attack the squirrel. The squirrel. Yeah, one of the things they do also is they will hide uh, things for later. So you start finding these oak trees growing in different areas in your yard. <laughs> it's because they were hiding the acorn. <laughs> they buried the seed and then it starts growing sometimes. White crowned sparrows are a very pretty sparrow. They are fairly common in the Bay Area. You'll see them in groups and, and they're usually feeding on the ground on seeds and things like that. And the lesser goldfinch is another common bird. It's very pretty, you know, the coloration is very nice. There's another goldfinch called the American goldfinch which is found all across America. But the lesser goldfinch is found only on the west coast. And some people I know put up, when they put up feeders, they get goldfinches coming to their feeders. Even the sparrows will come to the feeders if you put out seed. Mm -hmm. and this is actually in the sparrow family, it's called a junco. And these are also pretty co common and they are very pretty birds. This is a male, the female is a little bit more drab. And they are also hopping around on the ground, feeding on stuff. And you'll see when it flies, there's two white feathers at the end of the tails. And this is a tohi, which is also in the sparrow family, which is fairly common bird in the backyards. And they will be jumping around and feeding. Usually in pairs they'll be there. And there's lots, lots more birds uh, to be seen in the Bay Area.
So we have only one kind of venomous snake in the Bay Area. That's the rattlesnake, Western rattlesnake. Mm. Often people mistake it for a gopher snake for a rattlesnake. The gopher snake is not venomous. That's actually much more common. You're most likely to see a gopher snake when you're hiking or out in the particularly once the weather gets warmer. But sometimes, yes, you will see a rattlesnake also. I've seen them a few times when I'm out hiking. But they're actually, once you know how to distinguish them, it's not very hard. The head is much broader in a rattlesnake. It's like a big triangle. And the, the gopher snake is more the same as the body. Although that's funny that sometimes if a gopher snake is kind of cornered, he will try to puff up his head and try to look more dangerous. <laughs> because I guess over time, evolution has worked so that you know, if they look more like a rattlesnake, they are more likely to be left alone. <laughs> and of course, the rattle at the end of the tail, that's the rattlesnake. And the pattern also is very different, actually, once you learn to look, see it. This is another very pretty snake that we used to come across sometimes, it's called the California king snake. This is uh, not poisonous. No, no. The rattlesnake is the only venomous one. Yeah. And the correct term is venomous and not poisonous, technically. It's venomous. Yeah. Venomous. The difference, I think, is that animal can, that can bite you with something, that's called venomous, whereas if you yeah. eat something that can kill you, that's poisonous. <laughs> <laughs> venomous. This is a garter snake. There's actually three different species of garter snake that are found in the Bay Area. Mm. Those are also relatively common if you're hiking or something, mm. you might see them. They're much smaller. Gopher snakes can grow pretty big, about five feet long or something like that. These will be maybe two, three feet, typically. They're almost always found near water, it's close to water. Mm. And often in water, actually. I've seen them when they're swimming around and they try to catch frogs or something like that. It's a fence lizard, western fence lizard. This is the most common lizard that you'll see out in the parks. The one interesting thing they found with this one is that um, if a tick bites it, and the tick is carrying Lyme disease, so there is something in its blood that actually kills the um, organism that causes Lyme disease. So they have actually good for, the, and scientists are trying to figure out what it is and how, how that works. So can that be used somehow to combat like Lyme disease, for example? There's a few other kinds of lizards also. You might see alligator lizard, um, skink. Few. This is the only wild species of uh, freshwater turtle found in the Bay Area. Mm. There's another one called a slider that you sometimes see, but that's people have released them. <laughs> it's a very common uh, pet uh, and then people buy it when it's small and cute then after a while it's like yeah I don't want to take care of it then they go and dump it in the. Uh, so a lot of the places like the uh, small lakes in Golden Gate Park they've got tons of these sliders now uh, and some places they're now of course breeding and you know they've become established. Hmm. So it's a bit of a problem because also when they are taken from the pet trade or they will carry some disease back into the wild. Which uh, is so this one is not endangered, but it's threatened, they call it. So it's a little bit in trouble, I the pond turtle. But you still, I see them, uh, you know, quite a few times when I'm out. Yeah, I saw this, I, I'm not sure this turtle or another turtle, um, like many times while I like a, a hiking on a trail, like there's more real ones in San Jose. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm not sure which one. Yeah. So the other one has a line, like a stripe oh. near the head, that's mm -hmm. very clear. So there's a whitish line and there's, if you, if it's good light, you can see the red, which is, yes. the name is Red Eared Slider. And there's of course marine turtles that are found in the ocean. Those, typically our waters are a little too cold for them, once in a while they are found. There's one particular kind called a leatherback turtle that shows up in Monterey Bay area every year around particular time of year. And I've been on a whale watching trip when I saw that, it was pretty nice. It's a very big turtle, sea turtle. And they eat jellyfish. And they get into trouble because they will sometimes swallow plastic bags because it looks like a jellyfish. Mm -hmm. This is the big problem here with all the plastic that we are dumping in. 
So that's mm. one of the things you know all of us need to do better is not to yeah right. recycle you know, throw mm. things out. And so amphibians are slightly different than reptiles. And this is the tree frog. Okay. It was also called a chorus frog. This is the one that you hear very loud. Mm. <laughs> and in like in winter, in near the ponds and all that, you can hear the big chorus going on. And that's this frog. It's much harder to see. Oh. You can even if it's calling like really loudly and you keep looking for it, it's sometimes harder to see. Mm. But sometimes in the daytime, you come across them at the edge of the pond or something, and then you can. This is the red-legged frog. So this one is endangered. Mm. And because of this, many times they have to be very careful with development or if their development is destroying their habitat, they have to find other uh, mitigation, find some other piece of uh, habitat to compensate. And I don't, I'm not sure right now whether they are, you know, beginning to recover or not yet. But mm. You see them once in a while if you go to specific, you know, places, uh, always around a pond or something like that. And this can grow pr pretty much bigger than the other. The other one is like real tiny frog. This one's a little bit bigger. The much bigger one is a bullfrog, which you will see sometimes. And that's another one that's been introduced. Mm. Typically, again, they were released by people who kept them as pets or whatever. And now that's also becoming fairly common. And that's a real problem because that one will kill all kinds of other things. It'll eat whatever it can within its size. Mm. Small birds, you know, other frogs, reptiles, whatever. So that they're a real nuisance. The new picture didn't come. <laughs> okay. So what I was going to show was a California newt, which is again in winter it's pretty common in some areas. When the rains come, they start coming out. They go down to the water to breed. They look like a lizard. And maybe after I'm done with this one, we can go to the net and I'll just show you a picture of the California newt. Mm. And the newts are uh, they secrete something from their skin, which is actually a highly uh, toxic. It's a ne neurotoxin. And so if you, you know, it's very easy to catch. They're very slow moving, so you can catch it. Make you be sure you wash your hands or whatever. <laughs> but the funny thing is, so the garter snakes have evolved to be immune to that toxin. Most animals that eat a newt would die from the toxin, but a garter snake is able to kill a newt. So it's been one of these sort of evolution where slowly, you know, this one became toxin, but this one now starts developing immunity. Right now the garter snake is winning apparently. <laughs> Until the toxin becomes something even more powerful or different and it can't uh, cope with it. So till maybe about March or so you might see newts if you are uh, hiking or even driving on some of these areas. And uh, there's a particular area, um, road in Berkeley in Tilden Park, which they close every year to allow newts to cross. Because a lot of newts are crossing and they used to get killed. So they close this particular park between like November and March every year to traffic. South Park Drive? Tilden. Yeah, yeah. South Park Drive. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tilden Park Drive. Right? And there's a few other species of salamanders and newts also found in the Bay Area. This one's the most common, the California newt. Mm -hmm. So, the most famous fish in the Bay, Bay Area, again extended Bay Area along the coast is the great white shark. Mm -hmm. They're regularly seen along the coast and every once in a while there have been attacks on, you know, a surfer or like the people who go diving, you know, yeah. spear fishing. Mm -hmm. yeah, the, I think it's, Last year or two years ago, the water was really warm. Uh, there was a scene in the uh, cyclic, mm -hmm. cyclic, uh, cyclic drive Santa Cruz. Yeah, no. and that closed the cyclic. Uh -huh, I see. Yeah, for a couple of days. I, I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's a real. But almost all the attacks they feel are mistaken identity, particularly surfers because they are on the surfboard. Mm. And if you look at the silhouette from below, it looks like a sea lion. Uh, so to the shark, it looks like... Because often they will find that the shark comes, takes one bite, and then decides, no, wrong, mistake. Uh, <laughs> that's a taste good. Yeah. 
<laughs> but it's you know it can be pretty dangerous. It's, then they grow pretty big. Oh yeah. yeah uh, fish has this habit when they see like fa fast moving thing. That's how lure works, right? So when you cast yeah. and then you retrieve. Sure. Right? Sure. But in that case, they are a little more uh, intelligent. So they are actually looking at the shape. Mm -hmm. And you can see on the internet, you'll see pictures of, if you see from underneath, you know, there's a surfboard and the person paddling and the outline is so similar to a <laughs> seal or a seal. <laughs> and there's other species of sharks found in the Bay Area too. And in, in, within the Bay, all the way down to like, you know, Palo Alto, sometimes even Alviso area, there is uh, two species of sharks. One is the leopard shark that's often seen. Okay. Mm. People see actually see them from shore sometimes. But it's a uh, very pretty looking shark. In the most landing, Elkhorn. Elkhorn Slough, yes, that's another good place to see sharks, correct. Uh, a lot of the, this bat ray. And ray, bat ray, correct, uh -huh. correct. The, so rays are also related to sharks. Huh? Where is this? Uh, most landing, Elkhorn. Elkhorn Slough. It's uh, off Highway I 1, there's a place called Moss Landing, and then a little bit inland from there, is a reserve called Elkhorn Slough. You can go hiking there, when and the then power plan is. often I'm not. I, I wanted to see that. I've read where people from just from the bridge or from the hiking trail, you you can see a shark or. A, okay. This is the shark is year round, right? It's not only a particular. That is shark. right. That is right. So depends on. Although white sharks, there is a pattern. They do some kind of travel that they're trying to. Mm -hmm. Scientists are studying it. They've tagged them. They seem to go in this big triangle area between somewhere in Southern California, here, and then somewhere towards Hawaii. And they think they may go there sometimes to give birth or something like that. They're trying to figure that out. Yes, that's, uh, that's one of the things. I started learning the surfing, and then after learn more sharks in this area. So <laughs> <laughs> I stay away. <laughs> so, uh, but they are yeah. not, not that common. No, they aren't. I mean, yeah. it's, uh, <laughs> a lot of these things when people worry about, like, say, puma attack or shark attack, yeah. if you look at the odds, they say that the odds are, you know, of you getting hit while you're crossing the street to go to the grocery yeah. store or something yeah, yeah, are right. much higher than, right. you know, getting attacked by <laughs> <laughs> and, and you do that every day, all the time. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Same thing they say when you drive from home to the surfing area, you probably hit by a exactly <laughs> much higher more uh, than the bite by shark. Okay. <laughs> but they do have the uh, the Santa, I think Santa Cruz they have a surfing museum. Mm -hmm. I went there. There's uh, they show you the shark bite on the uh, you know the surfboard, mm -hmm. and a guy got uh, beaten by the arm and uh, the back. <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and every three, two, three, four years, somebody actually dies from a yes, shark attack. Yes. Mm. Just, uh, I certainly they make you scary. Yeah. Uh -huh. So salmon are found in the Bay Area, yeah, wow. and this is very seasonal. Again, around December, January, when the rains are high, usually in the streams, uh, like in the Marin County area, near Point Reyes, or those kind of places, but they are slowly showing up in more streams. They used to be found in many places, then when a lot of barriers were put up, so they are not able to travel up the streams to breed like they used to, but now they are beginning to remove some of those barriers. So Alameda Creek, they are trying to make it so that they can come all the way to Sunol. Yeah, that's Salmon what and trout. I've never uh, noticed, I've never seen one. I, I haven't yet seen one, though. Yeah. yeah, I've been reading about it, one of these days I might be able to see all right. But more and more of the streams, and there's other <coughs> like two or three species of salmon and trout that are found. There's a ton more other kinds of fish that I, as I said, I'm still learning a little more about, and they're very hard to photograph, of course. So. This one is a uh, ocean or no? It's just really so, a so yeah. lot of these fish have both in the sense okay. that it spends a large part of the time in the ocean, but then when it wants to mate and give birth, it comes up the streams inland. Mm. So salmon is like that. Uh, where did you take this picture? Uh, so this is not mine. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Right, right, right. This was in a, This was when they were in the stream. Ah, oh, okay. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, right. Because they they are uh, mating and then they'll give uh, you know lay the eggs. Oh, right. Yeah, in the summer in the ocean, uh -huh. you can catch. Uh, you might catch one in the, in the ocean, and they, they are protected, so you have to release. Release it. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, they're, because there's their numbers have gone down a lot. Uh, so you, there's another species called king salmon uh -huh. that uh, you can keep. Oh, okay.
So this is a tarantula. This is another kind of speciality of the Bay Area. You can see them relatively easily every year. A good time is around October because that's when the mating season is and the males are all running around trying to find females to mate with. So most likely you see males as they are wandering along. They'll be on the road anywhere. And they are mistakenly thought to be very dangerous. They are actually not at all. Mm. They do not have a bite that will kill you or anything like that. The only harm can, can come is that some of the, the hair, it can cause a very itchy sensation. So that is their defense is sometimes they will shed that hair and that hair. But that's, and you know, I've actually held one. You can, if you hold one very gently, it'll be no problem at all. Mm. In fact, they are very delicate. It's very easy for you to harm them. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's pretty big, right? It's not a small. It's like. Oh uh, yeah, they're about this. Like, yeah, okay. yeah, it can be that big. Correct. Uh, Correct. Yes. The, the Spanish they call it like chi uh, the chicken, chicken spider because oh. they look like the big. small chicken, oh, I see. but it's black instead. I see. Uh -huh. <laughs> Funny, another one got missed you. <laughs> so I had a picture of a black widow, which is another kind of spider that's found ah. in many parts of the Bay Area. That one is actually small. Mm. That one does have a venomous bite. Ah. Although almost nobody dies from it, but it can be very painful. Ah. But again, there it's very rare to get bitten by it. So when we moved to Pleasanton, I found that in our backyard. Mm. And I've been there like 20 years and you know, I find every once in a while I'll find one, I just Pick it, you know, not pick it up with my hand, but I'll take it in a small box and then go dump it back in the yard somewhere farther out, and that's it. So there, people again mistakenly fear them a lot more than the reality of you know what they are. And the the male is tiny, the female is a little bigger and very shiny black with a red hourglass shaped mark on it. That's the bit of black widow spider. It's another spider that looks similar but with the brown hourglass. Yeah. What's that? The name of that? So the hourglass is—it's the reddish hourglass is the black widow. You're saying yeah. there's a false black widow, false yeah, yeah, widow false too. Yeah. yeah, maybe that's the one you're talking about. Yeah. And of course, monarch butterflies are very famous, mm -hmm. and several places around here where in the winter you can see large numbers of them in the groves. Yeah, they, that's where they overwinter. So a large number of monarchs go to Mexico to spend the winter, but a smaller number come to parts of California. So around Pacific Grove there's an area, around Santa Cruz uh, near National Bridges there's an area. And in Fremont, Alden, uh, Aldenwood there is a place where they come. And there's a couple of other places that are smaller, somewhere in San Leandro I think there's a smaller uh, place. And it's pretty nice thing to see sometimes, again in winter, in December, January, you can go there and like, there are hundreds of these butterflies. And if it's a slightly warmer day, they, they'll be flying around, they're not just, uh, you know, sitting still all the time. So you can have a very nice sighting. There's of course lots of other kinds of butterflies. If you go to my website, I have a whole you know, list of species and I have photographs of maybe about 15, 20 species that are somewhat common. <coughs> uh, this is one of the ones, it's called Western Tiger's, Tiger Swallowtail Butterfly. And this one's actually relatively adapted to uh, urban landscapes. So you can see them flying around I've seen them in Mountain View often and different parts of the Bay Area, you can see them. And they've adapted to breeding and sort of laying eggs and on some of the trees that are found in the city. This is a fairly bigger butterfly, very pretty looking butterfly. If you watch for it, you very likely you'll come across it and see it. So these are dragonflies, this is the blue-eyed gardener. So dragonfly is another species that's kind of fun to see. There's uh, again about 25-30 species of dragonflies in the Bay Area. And there are dragonflies and damselflies that are somewhat similar. The damselflies are much slimmer, thinner and smaller. Dragonflies have a much sort of slightly bigger body, it looks like a helicopter when it's flying. And uh, both of these are of course they are uh, predatory insects. They are feeding on other smaller insects all the time. So that's what they are doing when they are flying around is they are trying to catch other little Mm. 
So if you go into the Santa Cruz Mountains anywhere where it's like the redwoods and very moist, very uh, you know higher uh, rainfall areas, you can see the banana slugs. They can grow about 10 inches long. They can grow pretty big. And the interesting thing with them is that if a piece of uh, like a tentacle or something is uh, bitten by a predator, it can regrow it. You see Santa Cruz. Uh, mascot, right? <laughs> mascot. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> Here are some things that you can do if you are interested in wildlife. Mm-hmm. Particularly the last part. If you like nature, if you like wildlife, you have to do things that help the environment. Like, you know, recycling more, mm-hmm. convincing other people to also do that. Like, it. In a lot of the workplaces I see, we are still dumping so much of this like, plastic bottles all the time. Mm-hmm. All of that is getting into the environment. And there's all kinds of citizen science projects where you can contribute, you know, mm-hmm. when they're trying to study some creatures. Mm-hmm. And uh, on the website there is a particular space with names of all the organizations connected with wildlife in the Bay Area. Mm-hmm. So you can find something that is aligned with your interests. These are just some of the places. There's lots of good places around the Bay Area where you can see wildlife. These are some of my favorite places to go. Yeah. That's the elephant seals. Correct. And I'm aware of state park. And, but you can see a lot of other things. I've got a nice photo of coyotes there in Ananawe. You have to book in advance. We, we booked. Yes, the, the trip, that's what I was saying, is very popular, particularly on the weekends. It's Rancho San Antonio, they've been seeing uh, pumas quite a bit, every once in a while. In fact, there was a f- video going on on YouTube where somebody came across the puma which had just killed a deer and it was, you know, struggling with it and like this guy is oh. taking the video and like, <laughs> incredible. Huh? Definitely watch out for ticks. I was hiking yesterday, I think, and I've already got like found two ticks on my book. Mm-hmm. clothing. So the season has started. So SFP Wildlife Road Info is the website, mm-hmm. and I've also got a page on Facebook and you know at SFP Wildlife on Twitter. And uh, whenever I find interesting information, I usually will mm-hmm. post it to one of those places. And on Flickr, I have a group where I have invited other people's photos. Wow. But I've created a collection of uh, sort of just few good photos of each species. So I've slowly been growing it and now I've got maybe about 1,500 photos. Mm-hmm. These are all uh, some people's photos, but they're collected in this group. I invite it and usually people accept the invitation. So. You can find a lot of photographs of different species in there. Mm-hmm. And there's a section on the website on books, so reference books that are good for birds, insects, reptiles, whatever, all kinds of things. I guess we did a lot of questions along the way, but anything else? <laughs> um, my question is, uh, uh, can you talk about that deal? Because fear. that fear and the found the the brain get the virus yeah. as uh, this area. So like a zombie disease. Or oh something? really? Yeah. I haven't heard about that. For deer? Pro- yeah. Uh. So actually, CDC is like saying uh, people should stop hunting the deer because mm-hmm. of it's yeah. very similar. I think it's very similar to macaw disease. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So eating that might be a problem. Yeah. Oh, I haven't heard of that yet. Oh, they are becoming very common in the Bay Area, that's for sure. Yeah, I think it's probably somewhere else. They are uh, having problems mm. yeah. deal with diseases. So, mm. Interesting. Yeah, quite, yeah, I heard a couple of times on the radio yeah. and she saw it on TV. So. Interesting, okay. The other question is, uh, uh, can you 
and talk about the wild fire and cause the wild animal um, how can they survive or run to somewhere else? So usually they have adapted where they know how to move out of the way. So they found that often wildfire will come and go and then the animals just move around and come back. Some animals probably get into trouble, particularly the ones that are like reptiles or things that are on the ground that are slower. Uh -huh. But mammals almost never get into trouble with wildfires. And birds, in fact birds sometimes take advantage because of the fire there's all these insects being flushed out. Mm -hmm. So you can see them hunting. Mm -hmm. In fact very recently there was an interesting thing they found, uh, I think in Australia, a particular species of bird, they are picking up partly burned pieces of wood and starting a new fire. <laughs> <laughs> because they are seeing the advantage that with the fire they get a lot of insects being flushed out. <laughs> so they have learned to do that. <laughs> But typically, normal fires are not a problem. Now, so what happens, the problem, what we are facing often is that because there is, we have suppressed fire for a long time, a lot of wood has built up. And then when the fire comes, the fire is much more intense than a normal fire used to be. So those fires are some of, sometimes the ones that get hard, of, hard to control and get out of hand. And some years back, they thought it was good to stop fire, so they kept stopping fire. Now they are realizing that having some fire is good. It's okay to let the fires happen. Actually, I heard on the, on the radio that the, the sequoia need it needs fire. fire to correct. There are there are so trees the that need fire for the seeds to germinate. Right. So so some level of fire is actually good for nature. Oh, yeah, because there are, there are some some life that adapted to the correct. environment. So it, the wild, wildlife is like nature park. And often they find that after the fire is done, within a few years, that area is recovering new species out of trees and plants are growing and animals and birds are coming back. So. <coughs> like, <coughs> you didn't talk about like a bear? Like a bear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so bears are not common in the Bay Area. Uh -huh. They are only found in the very northeast part, in Sonoma County someplace, oh, okay. there are black bears. Okay. But otherwise, it's not a Bay Area oh, likely to see. see. But up in the mountains, if you go into Sierra, yes, you'll see bears. Black oh. bears. Yes. No, there are no wolves? There are no wolves uh, in the Bay Area for sure. In California, there were no wolves until two years back. Oh, okay. The wolves have been slowly spreading from like Idaho and that area. Then a few years back, they started a small group back in Oregon. And then a couple of years back, one of the Oregon wolves crossed over into California mm -hmm. and now they think a uh, whole pack has started in the northeast corner of California. Mm -hmm. like in Yosemite National Park, there has more like a different white animals? So bears are found in Yosemite, oh, yeah, yeah, for yeah, example, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. right. Uh -huh. But apart from that, almost, a lot of it is the same stuff. Like, okay. But you'll see other things like marmots, which are not found in the Bay Area, but you'll see up in the mountains. Mm -hmm. So those are very big rodents, very big squirrels, basically, mm -hmm. marmots. And there are pikas, which are a small rabbit-like thing that are again found in the high mountains. Mm -hmm. So there are some, some, some different species of squirrels, for example. Mm -hmm. But in terms of, uh, you know, bobcat, coyote, fox, almost all the same stuff between here mm -hmm. and uh, the mountains. Bear is probably the biggest exception. Mm -hmm. And of course, the grizzly bear is not found anywhere here. They used to be found in California. Mm -hmm. They used to be all over the Bay Area, actually. <laughs> uh. And of course, you know, in an hour or so presentation, it's like you have to pick and choose. You it's just mm -hmm. too much to talk about. I can't, can't keep talking for a long time. <laughs> so you, you have been working in like for with animals thirty years, like. Uh, this is my hobby. Oh, your hobby. Oh, okay. oh yeah, I'm in software. I'm software. Oh okay. <laughs> I said. <laughs> I, I just always had an interest in wildlife, and ah. then somewhere along the way, you know, we decided. To we can do something to help people get uh, more information. Because uh, I found how hard it was for me as I was learning about, like, like I remember particularly lizards. I would see a lizard and I, it was very hard to figure out what it is. Uh -huh. And if you, you know, in those days, of course, in the, 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 the web, but even if you do a web search, you'll find stuff that's like all over the country, right? Uh -huh. But it's hard to know, well, what is found here? It's only likely that there are only two or three kinds are here. Uh -huh. But they all look similar, the ones in other parts of the country. So that is one of the motivations to create the website was to help what is found here, where to find, mm -hmm. how to find, you know, how to get more um, involved. Yeah, so this is just a hobby project. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, it's like I, 
Well, website has a lot of information. It's just not good information. Correct. It's, it's Correct. Too, too much noise. That, that is why we create the web. At first, I thought, you know, there's already a lot of information. What's the point, right? Yeah. But then this, that's the problem. So if you start with our website, you get much more selected information that's more relevant. Did, uh, recently, uh, I mean, this year we found the uh, mountain lions. They show up in the park sometimes in uh, somebody's backyard. Mm -hmm. So, are those here? They live in a pride or like the? No, they they are they never. Uh, they're like typically, the male is alone and yeah. it overlaps territories with females. And then okay. you know when they mate, the female will. So for a while, the female with young will maybe two, three, four together. Okay. But they don't live in packs now. Mm. Not like Africa. Line. No, correct, uh, correct. Uh, sort of. No, not at all like that. They are learning now as they are doing studies that they may be a little more social than they originally thought. They thought they were completely not social, but they found some case where on a kill, there were unrelated lions were sharing the kill oh. puma. So maybe they are uh, once in a while they are a little more social than they thought. Yeah, but in general, they still tend to live alone and okay. hunt alone. So they only got together male, female during the mating Correct. season. That's Correct. the only time. Correct. Mm. Okay. Uh, I just wonder the Rakko. They they are very the organization family. <laughs> yes, raccoons uh, can go in groups. Yes. Yeah. They're very smart. You know. yeah. yeah, they seem to be very smart. Correct. But I don't see the picture you you talk about. Uh, you say the Rakko. I mean, yeah, the the one, the one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 yeah, sorry. Yeah. That's one of the common or one that you're likely to see a raccoon. Mm. But the raccoon <laughs> is like a, I don't know, my impression of raccoon because it's usually around the like garbage area. Uh -huh. <laughs> is that uh, pick up trash. dirty or yeah. something? Yeah, but that's just it, because it's opportunistic. Uh, okay. I mean, in the yeah, wild, they hunt. They they will hunt fish or like uh, crabs or, or uh, what are those things? They love crayfish, mm. things like that. They are typically found nearer water. Ah, uh, okay. Mm. Yeah, I think they just realize that this is an easy source of food. So. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you do you also like it? Do like hun hunting or fishing? Do you do? I don't know. I, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to kill them at all. <laughs> I do photography. Oh, I see. So, so when you take one picture, you need to wait for many hours? You need to wait a long time? Or? It dip, no, I mean, I, I don't do that kind of photography. I usually just, what I happen to come across as I'm oh, hiking. Okay. So I, Okay. I get lucky, I take pictures. I rarely, I don't have the patience to sit for hours. <laughs> there are photographers that do that and you can get some. Particularly if you want to photograph the bigger animals, the carnivores, things like that. Yeah, I think you have to do that. Mm. If you want to get close to them, you have to sit quiet, otherwise, yeah, they run away. Nice. Okay. Any other questions? Have any dangerous animal which should be that helpful or keep distance? Well, I mean, many animals you want to be careful, even deer. You can, if it's in like the mating season and the males are aggressive, you, if you irritate it in some way, you might, you know, you could get uh, hurt. So most animals, if you keep your distance, if you don't behave aggressively, you'll be fine. They almost always want to get away from you. They don't want to really, you know, mess with you. Even snakes, same thing. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> okay, so no questions? Okay. Thanks for our meets. Yeah, we're fine. Thank you. <laughs>